Fnatic really is XP can sign at this. These are the two guys who are tryhards, if you okay. if you want to call it that way. They take it most seriously. They train the hardest. We see a Galio picked up here in mid lane. That's a it, it's a decent early support pick. Galio. No, it's support no. Galio. If they're picking it this early, it's support Galio because this is the kind of pick, uh, um, or, or they're not going to do it. But you nice. don't you don't rush for a Galio pick if it's yeah. if it's top or mid lane because that's too yeah. counterable. Well, I'm not sure if uh, GG can play Galio mid, they, uh, if it would have been... Hotshot plays him. Yeah, Hotshot plays him top, right? But you can even play him mid as well, yeah. So it would still not show your cards entirely. But I would love to see a support Galio, but CLG can't afford to take risks right now, and I feel that support Galio is a risk. They, they've played him many times, though. They have played him to win. I've actually seen Saint jungle him as well, though I can't wow. guarantee that's really the, the, the call there, but I've, I've seen it happen. Um, they might say that, you know, okay, we know what Nocturne can do. Galio's a good counter to Nocturne, and it kind of works. Nocturne does not have a good way of yeah. breaking that ult. Uh, we can see the Janna coming in there now as, as an available choice. The Caitlyn's super, super safe, and I'm a little bit surprised by it, just because you normally choose Caitlyn as like, oh, they picked something like, like Miss Fortune no, or, yeah. or Sivir, who are very aggressive early on, but you know, not not really high range, not a lot of high mobility in combat. So you can use Caitlyn to really poke at them. Oh, oh we're going to see Ezreal possibly come out here. And we actually, um, it was in one of the games actually uh, off screen, but Doublelift uh, ran an Ezreal against, I believe uh, it was, I want to say Ultimate or, or Millennium, because um, we've seen them play the rest of the mm. matches. So obviously it has to be one of the two. Um, but he basically picked up um, something like a quadra kill in, in an extremely close fight and turned the game around for them. So we saw Ezreal clutch, uh, clutch a win earlier. We're going to see Lamia uh, playing Ezreal in this game. I, I mean, it's possible you can play him as a mage and, and Shushe or uh, PK could pick that up, but it's likely no, to be yeah. a Janna Ezreal bot lane. Lamia is known for his Ezreal a little bit. He likes him. He, he's one of the few people who always stuck with Ezreal, no matter what people thought of the yeah. champion. And it looks like it's going to be uh, so, uh, Jungle Mundo, actually, uh, if the, that's going to be locked in. Yeah. The Ezreal Janna lane is it's a nice lane because the Janna shield is going to make the Ezreal poke even stronger. Yep. So that, that's a good thing to have there. And you want to be able to poke against Caitlyn because Caitlyn just has the uh, largest level 1 range of all AD carries, yes. I believe. Yes, Tristana outranges her at level 13, 14 or so. Oh, so yeah, something like that. It's, I think it's 550 plus like 7 or 17 per yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. So at some, at some point it does break even. Uh, but also 575, I think, on Caitlyn is the base range, something like that. It's, it's a really Caitlin, high. Caitlyn's 650. 650? Wow, yeah, really? Yeah, wow. she beats Ash. Six, Ash is 600. All right, okay. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, we are going to have that Mundo pick up. And Aurelia is one of the... Oh. Actually, no. Uh, so Hotshot actually played Aurelia in both the off-screen games. Only got one kill between both those games, by the way. He just was full assist how, Aurelia. How many, one, how many thousand CS, though? That's the question. Probably like five million. <laughs> yes. What? Oh, I haven't seen... Chuche has does play a good yeah. uh, mean talent. Yeah, and we haven't yeah. seen that grab in quite a while. But we saw him at New York, and that actually worked really, really well for him. Damn. Um, and so I like that option. He knows he's fighting Aurelia at this point. They could send Vlad there, but I think it's going to be... Because um, you don't want to send Talon mid without knowing who's going to be mid. Also, they ex I think they might have expected Galio as a mage pick, yeah. and so they're going to pick Talon against that. It is but indeed the support Galio, yep. isn't it? The support Galio, wow. it's Jungle Mundo, it's uh, Aurelia Sula top, and, the, and yeah, Caitlyn there with Galio, and the Ari mid, uh, we just saw her uh, just last game yep. for CLG. It worked extremely well. Yep. They did get that win over against All Authority, and it's like, if you're going to beat a team who was 3-0 in the group up till then, you can't really hate in that lineup too much. Mm, uh, is this a late game lineup though? Tell me that. I don't see any late game hyper carries really. For, for CLG, I think mm -hmm. they're going to rely on, on Aurelia getting really beefy and unkillable. Mm -hmm. I mean, Galio ult just in general, it, he's a little bit of a weaker laner, but he turns into a giant AoE monster later on. And when you consider you've got, you know, Caitlyn's going to be super safe and, and she's going to use that to get her scaling. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the support's not going to give her any damage like a Janna or a Nunu would. So Caitlyn's going to not be nearly as dangerous as Ezreal. Uh, but you've got a, a big Galio ult, you've got uh, Aurelia going to be a giant bruiser. Uh, the same thing with uh, with Dr. Mundo. Mm, uh, Ari's yeah. cooldowns alone enough that she can kind of start spitting out some DPS, so they, they kind of have a good shot there. They've got some burst potential as well. You look at Fnatic's lineup, and I like them for late game more. Talon and Vladimir scale super hard. Mm -hmm. I feel like Nocturne scales a little bit harder than Dr. Mundo. Um, and, and again, I like the Ezreal scaling plus the Janna, so I actually like Fnatic's late game potential. But CLG, of course, are just good at late game. Yes. They're really good at poking. And when you have a champion like Caitlyn, she can poke turrets from very far away, and that's always a possibility. The, um, the lineup on Fnatic Sykes also, also strikes me as somewhat of a jump in and do massive damage uh, lineup. It's very bursty. If you hit that Vladimir ultimate, then you just get the Cyanide uh, going in with a Noxion ultimate. You get Shushi jumping in with Talon, probably triggering his ultimate as well. Lamia can even, if he feels crazy enough, he can use the E offensively and go in 
as well. Yep. So it is super bursty, and if they get somebody like uh, the Ari or the Caitlyn uh, locked up there, or just, you know, hit by the Vladimir Altman, no. really? And CLG again doing the little, like, the joke swap. They yeah. had a hot uh, shot um, on Mundo and okay. St. Vicious uh, uh, yeah, in LA for a second. Yeah, they like doing that. They they're like they're trolling a lot. Um, why Ghost? Why not Flash on Vladimir? Uh, I, I guess the, the goal is that he's going to ghost pool mm -hmm. and figure if you're going to be untargetable during pool, right, you're going to get, I think it's two and a half seconds yeah. of, of untargetability and it's whatever, and you probably cover more distance with two and a half seconds of ghost than the flash. Uh, okay, that um, makes sense. With yeah. the additional sort of team fightility and the movement after the fact and all that, then that's yeah, okay. probably the goal there. Um, and, and it's also for chasing and cleaning up, I guess, if, yeah, if sure. the fight goes that well. But there's, which, there's still yeah. I mean, there's flashing over walls, which you can never really replicate with Ghost, but yeah. aside from that situation, generally speaking, Ghost will take you much farther, so I do see that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's the Mundo Mundo skin. It's the Halloween skin where Dr. Mundo dressed up as Dr. Mundo. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my personal favorites. It's just wonderful. Yeah, we are very, very excited to see this game here. The um, It's not as clear-cut, like you just said, they, they, the CLG are still going to be good in the late game, but there's two reasons why Fnatic need to win this early. One of them is that CLG have a home advantage in the late yep. game because that's where they live. Mm -hmm. The other one is that it comes down to game win lens here right now. A super exciting game that could still give Fnatic a chance to go on in this group. So one more, one last time for today. Let's make some noise for Fnatic versus CLG. I guess that's some noise. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. And you can see the lineups here. Cyanide going to be playing that Nocturne. has already learned Q. Uh, this is, by the way, Fnatic, in case you guys are not super familiar with the scene. It's PK going to be the solo mid mage on Vladimir. Got Melis on the support player on Janna. Shusha going to be solo top as Talon. You look at that build, and by the way, he's stacking a lot of magic resist. And mm -hmm. you can uh, actually, unfortunately, I think we have the, the player names, uh, or the, the, the picture of the players at the bottom left. But he's actually got almost no base armor, all magic resist. So he's actually going to be running into mid and going to be fighting against Big Fat LP. So he's actually going to be a bit of a lane oh, swap, so PK will be top. Nice. Uh, Lamy, of course, on Ezreal. Going to be the AD carry for Fnatic. St. Vicious over here, Dr. Mundo has already learned his Burning Agony. Going to use that to jungle. He's going to be jungling Dr. Mundo, of course. Smite and Exhaust, which means a lot of aggressive pushes. Hotshot GG on Aurelia. A lot of base stats. Tell me, does Aurelia really beat Ta Talon that strongly in lane? I don't think you even want to have that fight. Okay. I think you want to just like say, hey, look, our Vladimir is a champion. You know, who can go top or mid, no problem. Yeah. And we're going to grab Talon. And the thing is, I, I, maybe they expected because of all the bans they did, because of the Rise, etc., that they, they knew they would be safe with the Talon pick. Mm, yeah, yeah, I see. It's uh, definitely going to be uh, more fun for Shushe in mid lane, which is really where he wants to be. But he is going to have to show some uh, amazing plays to. to uh, push this Galio out of lane. I don't think he even can. It may just be a passive farming lane because Galio is just going to farm very, very safe. He's going to be given uh, probably the second blue buff. I guess St. Vicious wants to start with the first blue buff. Um, actually, no, it's not, I keep forgetting it's not Galio. It's, it's, it's against Irelia. Oh, Irelia came mid lane. Okay, yeah, it was supposed swap. to be against Ari. Yes, of course. Yeah, not Galio. The support Galio still, it messes with me. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, but that, that team fight late game is going to be pretty interesting. Once he gets sick, they're going to do some crazy things. They're going to get probably Dragon for free in those points. So, uh, good job by CLG doing that lane swap, getting Ari up there, mm. and an immediate gank from Nocturne. And, of course, Ari at level 1 doesn't have any way of leaving. Oh, oh misses. Cyanide misses the Q, and he's going to have to back off. They will at least the nice minion kills that way, but this is going to get bad for Talon pretty quick, I think. For Talon or for Vladimir? Uh, I think Vlad's going to be okay against Ari. I don't right. think it's going to be that harsh, but I think Talon vs. Aurelia yeah. is not a lane they want. He didn't, like I said, get any early armor from his runes, so he's going to be relying just on level up and stats. And, you know, right now he's doing okay. He's pushing with Rake, and he's doing all right against Hotshot, but I think that'll start to get scarier as the game goes on. What is the function of support Galio during your laning phase before level 6? What does he do? So you can Q spam and, and harass that way. You can see he's down to half mana right now because of that. You also have, um, it's, not, it's not as good as a Jhana shield, but you have that bulwark shield. Oh, yeah. Um, so he can tank damage, and the function of Bulwark, by the way, is it does two things. So one, it gives a lot of armored magic to whoever you target, so that guy is going to get really tanky really fast. The other thing it does is whenever that target takes damage, you get Galio healed. gets healed. Mm, so yeah. Galio can take some damage, and then Bulwark Caitlyn, if Caitlyn ever gets, some, gets, gets focused, and she's going to get uh, basically health back on the chest. You can see the Q spams do some damage. St. is setting up for a gang in mid lane right now. Shushe is not doing him a favor coming close, but oh, there he goes, and he slows down, and Shushe has to flash out of the cleaver. So successful gank 
forcing a flash out of Trisha lane mid lane. Yep, absolutely the case. It's going to probably still uh, be scary over and over. And thing is, that lane's not going to get any easier for him. He's going to... Uh, and actually, that probably would have been even scarier for Ari, honestly, because she can have uh, that charm and she can push minions mm. out of the way, etc. And of course, though he blew Flash, Mudo still has exhaust, which means Shushi's going to get caught out again yeah. very, very soon. Yep, same wish is just coming back right, a, uh, right away. And they're doing the right thing here. CLG... Uh, uh, Identify as uh, weak as an oh, Hodge going in with a flash very aggressively. There's the exhaust on Shoshi. He's not gonna live that. That's gonna be first blood picked up here by Dr. Mundo, dressed up as Dr. Mundo. And yeah, exactly what you say. He just came back immediately and they identified a weakness, as I was uh, beginning to say, and they took advantage of that fact. And it's not just that they're pushing Talon out of lane, it's also that they're messing with uh, the minds of Fnatic. Um, Shushi is not having the best tournament. He is definitely the weak point right now, and they're just like, you know what? We identify the weak point, so we're just going to poke it until it falls over the whole thing. And it's a good, it's, it's a really good strategy to do that as well. It, it's definitely working for them. They have gotten that first blood already. Irelia uh, is up a number of minions as well. And the one cool thing I actually like about the CLG lineup is they're actually pushing really hard at the bot lane. And what they're doing is they're using Caitlyn's long range to poke Ezreal when he last hits a turret. Because mm. th they know that Ezreal's going to walk up to the, to the same spot every time to get these last hits. He doesn't have time to sort of move back and forth because he has to land an attack every time the cooldown comes up on his basic. Um, and, and they're using that just to poke, 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 poke. Oh, man. St. Vicious in mid lane again. Shusha getting caught out here again. He still doesn't have flash. He tries to get away, gets slow, and immediately falls again. That's another kill for St. Vicious there, who's just... Brutally, brutally murdering mid lane here. I don't know if, if Silent could have done anything, if he could have showed a little bit more presence and maybe babysat that lane, but you don't want to have your jungler that tied down as well. And that mid lane right now could not possibly be going better for CLG. Yep, they're going to be pretty happy with this. I'm surprised they didn't send that swap earlier. One of the times he sort of raked and pushed to the turret uh, to swap over, because I feel like Talon can pressure Ari pretty well. Ari, uh, let's look at her sort of setup right here. Does not seem to have any bonus base armor. Doesn't really have anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, no really sustain either. Yeah, she opened boots three potions, but you can chew through that as Talon. That's not hard to do. Well, it looks like they're going to stay with this lane, these lanes for now. He did come back with a, a ward, finally. Um, the first time he died, he probably just wanted to buy his shoes and not... Well, he had shoes. He, he, he had bought a long sword and an yeah, extra potion instead of getting a ward, which I think was a mistake. Greedy. Yeah, that's, that's very greedy as well. It's like, I want damage right now. And what for if you die? Silent coming in for a gank in bot lane, but there's a ward spotting him, and they're just going to fall back from this easily enough. Shaw's so actually putting a Q down to do some damage. Didn't quite hit. It's looking very, very good right now with a 2k gold advantage already for CLG early in this game. And we were saying that if Fnatic can win this, it's probably really just in the early game that they can win it. Well, I do like their late game still, though. I don't, I don't feel like CLG's uh, late game ramping is all that good. I mean, yeah, Galio's pretty strong, but I think Caitlyn, if, if Lamia can, can keep up, Caitlyn can fall off. Yeah, but still, they may win the battle and uh, lose the war, because uh, if they take very long to win this, they may still be out of the tournament. Well, the other, the other opportunity, though, is if uh, Dignitas is the one that goes 4-1, that slow win doesn't matter anymore. Ah, it's yes. the against authority game that matters. Because then it depends, you know, how quick the games were with, with against authority versus CLG and the games of against authority versus Fnatic right. in this match here. It can, go, it can go either way with it, so... St. Vicious now setting up for a gank in top lane. He's running in. The Cleaver actually hits. Let's see if a charm is going to follow up as well. Oh, nicely dodged <laughs> Pika, but he dodges right into the second Cleaver and goes in for a last hit. Should be safe enough here as uh, Vlad in top lane. Yep, he's going to keep uh, alive for here, and uh, that's probably going to be fine for him. The minion kills, uh, not too bad either. 46 on Ari, 45 on this Vladimir, so they're keeping pretty much equal. 59 though to 26 yeah. uh, CS in mid lane, and he bought a second long sword instead of uh, getting a new ward. Um, not sure if I agree with that. He's going for a brutalizer as soon as he can. Yeah, I know, I know, but it, it's not going to be that much of a damage jump for him. It's not like he's suddenly going to one shot people with a brutalizer. That, that's true, but he does need whatever he can, and, and once he gets to the team fight phase, he can still one shot Ari. Uh, you got that one second silence and the, and the mm. burst with everything else. You know, if you can at least catch up in levels, you know, get to level nine by the time there's a really big team fight, he has really good burst potential. So um, it's pretty much up to 13 that he really gains a lot of damage every level up. Um, once you max out W and max out that Q, so he's gonna get scarier and scarier as time goes on. It's just can you hold on and, and stop feeding Hotshot? <laughs> and, yes. and with the Janna in there, you can blow back the Aurelia and things like that. So I feel like there's still a lot of possibilities here for Fnatic. Yes, and he is of course maxing the W, the Rake for just instant stunnable damage.
Yeah, that's the the, the thing to do. We, I guess while there's a lull, you can have a quick look at who is maxing what. Uh, no surprises on Nocturne maxing Q there. Uh, Vladimir maxing Q as well. Oh, and actually Nocturne going in, in bot lane against Sutterlift. Sutterlift is very, very low already. That's oh. the Asphyll. Albert picking it up there. Well done. And they keep going for Chorster, forcing the flash out of him as well. That could be a dragon right now, Freak. That is a chance that it, though Aurelius still is a scary, scary person. No teleports on either top lane, so they're actually going to be kind of stagnant there. Oh, uh, Shushay picking a fight with Hotshot here. That was probably not the thing he wanted to do. He takes the full ultimate as well. But they have now pulled the dragon, and I'm not sure that they can do this without their bottom lane. And yeah, Galio's yep. going to farm. They're going to get it. Top. Ha I don't think Hotshot can do much here. I think he would get CC'd out. Yep. Uh, yeah, he just scouts it, kind of gets the timer. It's okay, it's going to be about 15 and a half. 15.28 is going to be the, be the respawn there. And you can see that the gold is almost uh, all the way back there. They're still yeah. down uh, 1,200 because of the, the earlier kills, but uh, they are definitely catching up. Dragon plus that kill at bot is a pretty big deal, and Lamia now going to get pretty far ahead oh. of the lift. Shuja gets jumped in mid lane uh, so badly that he has to actually use his ultimate just to survive. You never want to use an ultimate with offensive potential just to survive in a lane. Yeah, but at the very least, it's a second flash for him. It's only yeah. a, what, a 75 or so second cooldown. Yeah. So uh, as time wears on, he's going to get in a little bit better shape, especially if he gets, uh, you know, the Brutalizer, etc. He does pick that up, that Brutalizer yep. now. It's going to lower that cooldown by seven and a half seconds. Um, and so we can kind of use that to sort of get away. You know, once he gets enough AD, he can rake, farm, etc. Um, and so I think it, it's, it's in damage control mode for Shushe, where, you know, he still wants to build a glass cannon because a tanky talent won't do anything at all. Mm -hmm. um, and so he just wants to get to the, the point where he can survive Mundo ganks, and he can do that. I think with his ultimate and he wants to get to the point where he can one-shot Ari which he can if he keeps farming and once he gets enough damage to one-shot things with Rake like McGon can with her um, tormented soil then he'll start to be in, in a better place bot lane is still rather even um Caitlin's at 84 versus 75 so about nine creep advantage there but just the, the creep differential in mid lane it's, it's so painful to look at 90 to 36 that's it's not even close that's like solo queue st stomp level right there mm -hmm. uh, yeah they the uh, Fnatic tried to do the, the swap, but I, I think it actually backfired in that he the Mundo gangs wouldn't have been quite as easy in top lane. So yeah, if they that's just true. stayed in top lane, might have been better for Fnatic there. Yeah, but uh, Cyan is back at bottom with the new ultimate. Looks like they still might want to jump into this. The problem is that Galio is, of course, level 6 now. So yeah. that was the problem last time is Galio was 5 and he couldn't really stop, dub uh, stop double lift from dying. And they just kind of chained some ults together because Lamy had just hit 6. Yep. Uh, in this case, though, they've got, you know, really good reflexes on the bulwark keeping uh, double lift from taking too much damage. Uh, and he's actually got an early uh, vamp scepter as well, so he's going to sustain pretty nicely. Um, but yeah, we're gonna see how this pans out. This could get pretty scary. And Double is doing exactly what you said he would do. He just pushes under the tower and then uses his Q and his ridiculous range to uh, keep poking Lamia. And every time uh, Lamia gets a Q, a few hits in, Chaucer just puts the bulwark down on uh, Double Lift. So it is actually a very good lane. St. Vicious is now coming down. They may be setting up for a gank here. Though I'm not quite sure it's gonna be a lane gank, but Fnatic have this warded. They should see it, yep, and St. Vicious is away of the water as well. There's a neutral ultimate, but I'm not quite sure where he went mid lane. Hot shot right. is gonna oh, go Hot down. Shot. That burst damage wow. is pretty good. Wow, I didn't see that coming at all. Uh, yeah, the, the icons just completely overlapped at me. I was like, where is he? Where did he go? <laughs> Darkness. Darkness happened, I went to the left hand side, finally found the Nocturne icon. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, you got the burst damage again, that Brutalizer, right? You get enough burst damage and you finally start to do some good things. Now, Hot Shot's still at 105 minions. Um, so that's, you know, really good, but uh, I mean, that went really, really well. Shushe took the enemy raves and is going home right now. Let's see if he has anything good to buy. I would expect probably Berserker's Greaves here, or is he going to go for the uh, Murky Treads? I would expect cooldown boots, oh, honestly. Oh, cool. yeah, that makes sense as well. Let's, let's see what he goes for. He oh, he might be saving for BF Sword. Yeah, oh, he's saving for BF Sword. Let me check okay, his gold. Yeah. And he's yeah, at he's 820. only 800, yeah. So he's got a while to go. He could have bought cooldown boots or most of Merc Treads. I got to call out Hotshot, though, for one mistake here as we watch Vladimir try to run away from Dr. Mundo. Um, I think he should have went Ninja Tabby because he's going to take mm. mostly physical damage here, and he's fighting against an AD champion, etc. PK still trying to run, will not juke that cleaver, but I don't know if they can dive the turret. They might go for it. No, 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 so no he's a little bit too low. Yeah, he didn't have fuel, but I'm not sure how many uh, turret shots Hotshot could have tanked at that point, really. Yeah, and they're the, gonna give blue over to uh, it, Talon now. Is it, yeah, of course it can, it can go to Talon because he's he's sort of like a, an AD caster, so he can totally use blue, and Vladimir doesn't really need it. That's good. I like that. that that's yep. another advantage of the lineup.
Mm -hmm. And the other blue, of course, being given to Ari right now, who is more of a traditional caster. Uh, Ari being top lane did the screw with her uh, taking blue a little bit, so Irelia is back top lane right now with all that farm. She should be doing really well against Vladimir. Yeah. It looks pretty good. She's bullying him really hard. And oh, Shushi jumping in on Big Fat. The silence is actually going to hurt against Ari. If he gets the silence off before she can get a um, taunt off, actually, can he jump over the taunt? Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, let's see if he actually manages to pull that off. Yeah, he, he could totally, um, you know, pop that cutthroat and juke over Charm. This would be really hard to do, but honestly, he could do it. All right, in bot lane, still more farming. Cyanide did come for a gank in top lane. Nothing much happened. Saint Vicious is just around the corner. They may dive Gee, this, but shot. Yeah. very, very aggressive dive there. Uh, Ignite going down Cyanide, so Cyanide's going to fall as well. It's a one-for-one -one exchange. Not sure Saint Vicious wants to stay. He just did pop the ultimate, so he does a lot of damage against Piki, who doesn't have his blood pool right now, and he may actually go down to Dr. Mundo, and he does. Completely by himself, Dr. Mundo taking down Vladimir. I didn't quite expect to see that. Well, that was impressive. Talon tried to come up. Actually, there's no ward coverage, so he could tower dive Mundo, but he doesn't know he's there. So. Yeah, yeah. He's just going to... I think he's probably going to stay top now, and um, they're just going to reset it that way. Yeah, at the very least, get yeah. some free farm out of it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And at the 50 minutes, Mark Baron just spawned, just to point that out. It's not yep. super relevant, but I yeah. said it. Baron's now on the map. It's a possibility, and he's going to just... You just saw Shushay AoE farm that minion wave down. You're going to see he's up to 14,500 gold, or 14,500, sorry. Ooh. Still not enough for BF Sword. Big Fat coming through Fnatic's jungle right now for a gank on bot lane, but there's a good ward in... No, actually, there's, there's a oh. CLG ward in Tribe Rush, so... Galio has flash. Yeah, they could pick up the kills if they wanted. But two members of Fnatic are also coming bot lane right now because they have Dragon Timer. St. Vicious has just pulled it right now, and Galio is coming in with the assist, but five members of Team Fnatic are around, so if they go move quickly enough, they can, they can engage on this and possibly turn it around for them. And it looks like they're going to let the dragon let dragon reset, and Fnatic are like, you know what, I will take that dragon from you. We are just going to kill it really quickly, pull it a little bit in our way, and yep. Relia is going to take top turret for that, and they may actually take mid turret. Oh, no, they no, don't they're, have time. they're going to die. Hotshot can't take this yet. And he already, he already blew his ult last time, so we can't mm. immediately push this. We'll see if they can get over there in time. Looks like Vlad's running as fast as he possibly can. I like this AoE lineup from Fnatic again. They have that, that Talon-Vladimir combo. Mm, Ezra yes. ult as well, pretty good for that. Uh, and we're going to see if Galio can make that, that happen uh, on the other side here. But one thing to point out is they've got a, a four melee team here. Um, you know, uh, or sorry, a three melee team against Janna, which yeah. we saw that happen last time uh, <laughs> when they fought against uh, Dignitas, did not go that well. Um, but they kind of they kind of got burned by Janna ults. The other thing is, again, support Galio. Is he going to survive through his own ultimate? Is he going to well, be tanky I mean, he can bulwark to... himself. It shouldn't be too bad. You look at him; he's actually yeah. maxing bulwark now after Q. Um, Ooh, Vladimir getting caught there in top lane again. A little bit too far. The cleaver misses, so it doesn't really matter. He's still slowed enough. He puts his own ultimate down. He blood pulls it. There's a Noxious ultimate coming in. So they're turning this around right now. It's probably not going to be enough. Actually, it is going to be enough to take down Saint Vicious. Good oh slow. Oh my gosh. Come he's on, trying. one attack. <laughs> yes, he shielded himself against another slow, and they may actually want to die of this. They get a flash out of hotshots. So that was well done. He just... Shushi's coming. Shushi's coming to drop hotshot. Oh, man. Do they have a clairvoyance? Where did he come from? They have a clairvoyance. They can use it. He doesn't need it. Oh, it goes off. Yes, that is the kill. Nice. And Fnatic done. now for the first time winning in kills, and now actually winning in gold as well with the turret kill up. They're actually starting to take the lead over Counter Logic Gaming, and this just got a whole lot more interesting. Fnatic and there's a making lot of, some things happen. There's a lot of pressure on Fnatic still though because they can't just say oh yeah we're winning let's just wait it out they need to make something happen very very soon they're taking I think they know they didn't take red red wasn't up but they need to make something happen very soon because once again they are only going to be 3-2 and they are going to be t in a three-way tie of, t uh, of uh, three teams that's a very hard sentence to say for me that are 3-2 and the decider is going to be how quick have these teams won against each other so yep the quicker they can make this win happen the better and this is going to be pretty crucial. So we're going to see now the bottom lane 
Uh, Lamy, 157 minions, actually still getting out CS by Double Lift, but yep. uh, Double Lift is on her way, uh, well, Caitlyn is on her way back from the base to actually, try no, to get he, some minions. Yeah, so he's, he, he is getting out, says, I feel confused to Portland. And oh, oh Big Flat jumping, wow. using his ultimate to actually jump into safety. Sinai is actually so dodging all of that. And I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here right now. This is the playstyle that Trisha needs, this go in and kill someone playstyle. Um, it does seem to be working for him a lot better than what he tried in top lane before. The Wukong just didn't come together at all. Indeed. And by the way, um, for those wondering, uh, Talon was played before as well uh, from Fnatic. Shushay had played him uh, against uh, Millennium and got ah, a win there. Nice. So this is not the first time they've been rolling Talon in this tournament. This is the second time and so far 1-0. and out, So uh, that's pretty good so far for them. Very nice, and you called it as well, he went for the long sword, he didn't go for cooldown boots, he went for murky threats, I guess it makes sense for charm around from Ari, uh, you don't want to be locked down as a squishy uh, melee caster. Yeah, uh, bot lane is still pushing pretty hard there, and I, I'm, I'm actually surprised by how good the Gully support is, the bulwark does make you very, very tanky there. So that's working well, it's, it's again Shushe on Talon against Big Fat G on Ari in mid lane now, I'm sure he doesn't want to pick any fights, he just wants to use his rake to um, farm up and with blue buff he can do that as much as he pleases, even though he's not Mundo. Yep, and yeah, Big Fat's going for a, a he actually used his build before, he's going for that, the early Hextech Revolver and then into uh, Riley, so he's going to be a tanky guy, but bot lane, a little bit of pressure going on there, looks like Double's going to make it out and be alive. Pika is trying to do something against Hotshot there. He's probably just poking a little bit, taking uh, golems as well. So he is now he bullying. He can zone Aurelia if yeah. he wanted to. The just bully, some wards. The, the bullier has become uh, the, the bullied. <laughs> Pretty much. That didn't work. Anyway, uh, Ari going into Fnatic's jungle. Probably, probably just ward. Let me see, does she even have a ward? Uh, no, she does not. So just checking what's going on in that jungle. Did you time Dragon Freak? Uh, no, I forgot what the timer oh, was entirely. No. I Me mean, neither. I'm the support player here. I should be doing it, but <laughs> I'm not very good. Uh, yeah, so a Dragon could be coming up again soon. The first two Dragons went to, uh, went to Fnatic pretty much uncontested, but still they're only about 700, 600 gold ahead of uh, CLG who are doing a great job farming and they're totally not fussed by this. They're like, you know, uh, we're losing a little bit, you know what? So what? We're just going to keep farming and take it into the very, very late game where we are unbeatable. Um, also, one thing to point out, Freak, four kills for CLG, yes, but they're all on Dr. Mundo. Oh, wow. Who is investing in tankiness, which is nice and all, but, you know, you can kind of kill him in a team fight. I mean, he's going to slow one person, going to do some damage with his uh, burning agony, but it's not that much. And the ultimate going down from Ezreal in bot lane just to, I guess, push the wave a little bit so he can go home safely enough. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's yeah, it wasn't based off Dragon, I think it was just a recall. Now, Mundo, by the way, I mean, you say he's not going to do a whole lot of damage, but he's actually maxed uh, that, uh, that W, that Burning Agony first, so it's 100 DPS, which, is, which really doesn't suck mm. uh, very much. It's basically like rank almost one Crow Storm the entire time. That's not too bad. He's getting Cleaver second, wow, a yeah, yeah, yeah. couple points in Masochism as well. So, um, you know, he's going to be a, a decent damage threat, but you're right, he is building tanky. He's not getting like a, like a Zeke's Herald or anything like that to sort of build up that attack speed, but, you know, he's still got that, that constant just damage threat from uh, Burning Agony. That might just be enough for him. We'll see how that pans out. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, with the bursty uh, setup of Fnatic, because he can't really lock one down that much, the, you said it's 100 DPS, which is certainly a lot, but the question well, is how dragon. many S are you going to have? How many seconds is the Titan there last? Is, yes, there is. there's the dragon pickup for Fnatic. Third dragon completely uncontested. I don't know that CLG even knew this was happening. Now we have a 1.3k gold advantage for Fnatic, and they're coming in on Big Fat LG. And also there's the Alba from Cyanide going down. Is he going to get the Fear Proc? No. Jumps across the wall, but Big Fat LP is slowed right now. He has to use his ultimate to get out of this. And I think they're going to be happy forcing an ultimate and a flash. I mean, they used one ultimate, two ultimates themselves. So that's, that's okay. That's yep. bad. And they took bot turret at the same time. Yeah, they, they did more or less trade. Those. Actually, no, mid turret actually still alive. Actually, they're jumping on the St. Vicious a little bit. Some good damage there. They've got to be a little bit afraid of this, though. I think it could get jumped on. The Cleaver just barely misses. Hot shot can land the QE. Could do some good damage. And they got that bottom turret. That's two turrets to zero. But that mid turret super low. The bottom turrets, yeah, bottom turret down below a third. The top turret only at half. So CLG, if they ever get some, some map control, can immediately take pretty much any of those three turrets if they ever want to. Melisan just picked up an Oracles for himself. I don't see an Oracles on the enemy team uh, quite yet. So it, look, it looks like Fnatic are now posturing to take map control, put their own wards down, clear out the enemy's wards, 
Um, this is, a, of course, exactly the kind of thing you want to do in mid-game. Mid this enables gangs, this enables, um, you know, roaming, uh, roaming kill squads in the enemy forest, that kind of thing. Uh, oh, x getting chunked Ooh. nicely there by... Whoa, that was just the combo from Big Fat LP. But he is, of course, a Hemomancer, so he's just going to Hemomancer himself up to full health again very, very quickly. It's a, it's a verb, right? Sure, why not? Top lane. <laughs> Top lane, Shushi is getting dove on a little bit by Hotshot and St. Vicious, he's gonna be fine though, and you're probably gonna use his rake to, yep, farm all of that nicely enough. He is now at a 137 farm versus Irelia's 179, so he's still behind, but not as badly as he could have been. Yep, and the freshly completed Bloodthirster only at seven stacks so far, so you've got an interesting situation here for Fnatic, where they can wait a little while longer, get some stacks uh, back up, uh, and, and could have, sort of grow the power there. Oh. Uh, oh, this is actually a little bit bad for PK. They're going to jump in there. Big Fat LP jumping in. He's going to run away from Hot Shot. But here comes Galio. And everyone else is going to pull. He does dodge some of that, but does not have flash. Does get dropped down. 5 to 5. Now the score. Uh, still a 13, sorry, 1700 gold advantage for Fnatic. But uh, they were unable to pressure that blue. And, and there goes the, the jump. You yeah. see, I don't, I don't know if Lamia really should go for the steal there. This is pretty scary. It is very scary. He tries to steal, but it doesn't quite do it, but do, does a good amount of damage to uh, Chaucer there. Why was x in that particular corridor going into the enemy forest? What was he doing Well, there? he was initially going, I think, near the turret. Uh -huh. And Hotshot came from the top left right ah, here, so he okay. ran right away instead of, like, straight down. Right. Straight down probably would have been the better choice. Wouldn't have gotten caught by Galio, but ultimately just the CC was enough to drop him down. Right, that... The game definitely is super open right now, and it seems to be going CLG's way in that they are allowed to just take it into late game. You did point out uh, correctly that uh, Fnatic have a good uh, late game um, setup, and as we see Cyanide diving into Hotshot, I don't know how much damage he can do here. Does get the fear off, but gets stunned, of course, as Hotshot fell lower than him. And St. Vicious just came out of the corner, and we see miss a kill pickup in bot lane, but we're going to stay top lane freak as they are diving in right now on uh, Cyanide, who has to use a flash to get away and is going to be fine. Lamia is actually doing an impressive job. I have to say, oh, they're diving in on Silent again, but expect it just around the corner right now. Lamia falling dangerously, dangerously low. There's an ignite on him. He's going to be fine, though. Expect is slowing down St. Fishes, getting him super low as well. Nobody really wants to fight, but, but Talon is coming from mid lane. Uh, I expect it could have probably chased that a little bit more. Maybe yeah. he didn't want to give away the position of Shushe. The clear Ooh. points might be enough. Oh, the great Cleaver, so he's going to go for it anyway. He's actually got stunned. Can he get the ult off? He's actually going to oh. drop down a hot shot. He'll trade, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there was a there was an ex assist for CLG and no assist call for Fnatic, so that was not a good trade. Yeah, Shushi dove in with his ult still down, actually. He'd actually mm. already blo uh, blown that, so that really would have hurt him because he would have gotten that kill without getting owned. Yeah, um, yeah. Did trade like, blue buff for it and all his Bloodthirster stacks. At that point, it's not worth it, man. How does Ezreal compare to um, uh, Caitlyn in the late game? I gotta think Ezra's gonna have a better late game right here. He's got his Trinity Force, which is a little bit of an early game uh, centered choice instead yeah. of going for like Infinity Edge. But you look at the build, Caitlyn, she's only got Infinity Edge, doesn't yeah. have a Zeal or any other crit items yet, only Zerk needs for attack speed. So right now, Ezreal's just more powerful than Caitlyn. A as far as, you know, in a perfect world, uh, I still, I think, gotta hand it to Ezreal. I think his passive is just a bigger DPS increase than yeah. Caitlyn's gonna have. Um, and he has, uh, for example, you know, a great attack speed buffs there. He's going to help out Talon and Nocturne. He's going to nerf uh, Aurelia uh, and Dr. <laughs> Mundo. And so I see what you did there. Ezreal nerfs Aurelia for us, NP. <laughs> nice. Uh, well done. So, yeah, I like his overall utility and, uh, and damage late oh. game. Oh, what actually happened there, he just put it in chat. Phage luck, I love you double. So I guess he just got two Phage procs on uh, Caitlyn. That's how he could kill him there. Oh, wow. Uh, it happens sometimes. I mean, there's still a little bit of an element of luck, even though we did remove dodge from the game. Uh, <laughs> still got Phage. It happens. And you know NP. what? Lamia did, Lamia did admit that it was, yeah, it was luck there. Yeah, sure. But it looks like uh, they really, really... Oh my gosh, Shushu just totally got caught. A great ult gets him out, though. And oh my gosh, the damage output on all of CLG. And they have no healers unless Chaster can get some really good... Oh my gosh, Shushu got caught again. This time, no mm -hmm. ultimate. Takes a lot of damage there. Will drop down. And Saber is going to just jump in there. Let's see if they can get any damage. There's the Chaster ult. They broke it pretty quickly, but Lamia not in great shape anymore. Healer's going to come off. Big Fat LP go to damage up, but they don't stomp him down. And they're going to pick up what no, might be almost wow. an ace. They picked up four kills in a row. 
And they're going to run for Baron if, if they have enough exactly health for it. Do. And that, I mean, you can get caught once. Okay, it's fine. You have an out of it. You can get out of it. But twice in a row, really? That really hurt him. Yeah, you don't. You, you really don't want to do this. Now, Cyanide, turn on hero mode and steal that Baron away from five members of the enemy team. I want to see that. They're low on health, but he's been revealed. Yeah. Spell shield goes off. It's down really, really low. He can't get it. Hotshot's going to actually chase him out right now. Cyanide going to be turned into a kill. Yeah, there's the Baron pickup. So CLG now, 2,000 gold in the lead. I've just picked up Baron. Finally getting themselves back in a favor. And Hotshot, the chase is on. And that will be a kill up on Cyanide. Yeah. And that's pretty excellent for them. That turned the game around so very quickly. It looked for a moment as Fnatic were, were, taking, were taking the decisions here. were actually in the driving seat. But... <sighs> If you get caught like that, CLG are the kind of team that understand what just happened and say, okay, cool, you, you're handing us the game? Cool, we'll take it, thanks. Yeah, seriously the case. Lamia could not quite stand up to Big Fat LP. You saw him kind of in a, in a duel right there, pretty much in melee range. Melisan did give Ezreal that, that oh. shield, and it was just not quite enough to win that. But they are going for Dragon again, so, I mean, it's, it's a little bit, it, at least it keeps them in the game, I guess. CLG still have no idea of the Dragon timers this game. They have no yep. idea that there's even a Dragon on this map. <laughs> I don't think they've seen it. 35-10 is going to be Dragon, 35-40 going to be Baron. They're going to jump in here. PK taking a lot of damage on a half immediately. Wow. They're actually going to back out real quick. And that Galio shield really doing a good job of stopping this aggression. Yeah. Ah, uh, PK is uh, a lot um, squishier than he looks. I mean, he does have a good amount of, of health, but that's, that's from the AP and from the Crystal Scepter. He doesn't have any defensive stats at the moment from items. Yeah, this could get pretty scary for him. And Cyanide eating a cupcake there that Caitlyn thoughtfully left out for him. No, how sweet. Yeah, it's very nice of her. Yeah. Yep. Um, There's that push at top. Finally, Dr. Muna picks one up there. And you're going to see CLG. They already got that mid turret a little while ago, so it's two turrets to two. Yeah, and they're going they for the blue again uh, on, on Shoshay. Uh, let's see who he's going to give it to. Um, the push coming in from CLG right now. Um, I kind of like pushing bot lane after taking Baron because bot lane is somewhere you never want to be when Baron's up. So this would be a nice time to, to push bot lane. It doesn't really make a difference at this point. They can really push anywhere they like. They, mm -hmm. are, they, they have quite a good advantage at this point. A green pot on, um, on Caitlyn as well, so she can pop that whenever she wants to have a nice bit of damage increase. Red pot on Talon, so it's at least a little bit defensive if he needs it. Sign it's his second red elixir of the game. He got one earlier as well. Oh, wow, okay. Cyanide now finally figuring out how to level up shield, so that's that's good for him. Helps a lot, yeah. Yep. 18 stacks on uh, the Bloodthirster there for Talon. I think he's the only Bloodthirster in this game, so mm. it's the one stacks we can, f the one set of stacks oh, we can follow easily. Xpeka trying to defend against Hotshot there in top lane. He should be should be fine. Yeah, Hotshot is going to rotate around mid lane, and oh, they caught Cyanide between two shields. But as soon as the charm was over, he shielded himself again. St. Vicious just doesn't care about cues from Ezreal at all. Ezreal ah, doesn't do any damage as well. Uh, well that's going to be a tower falling down. Hotcha jumping in, expecting immediately pooling. He is going to be fine. They don't seem to want to follow this up. <laughs> I have to stop myself from laughing whenever I hear the squishy sound of the <laughs> plastic cleaver. <laughs> yep, absolutely. But it looks like the ult uh, level 3 for most of, of both teams at this point. So St. Vicious is not going to be dying really anytime soon. Actually, didn't go for Warbox despite the early stack, but does have Randwins and Aegis. Also a Wit's End, so he's really going to be all about just throwing out damage repeatedly. And this could get pretty interesting. Cyanide just taking so more damage. Shusha getting hurt as well, but at least can farm minions out. Uh, but this turret now down to half health. Look at Double just sitting there, right clicking over and over. And you see the turret now down about 20%. And yeah. then, yep, Hot is going to take it. They're going to go for this turret right here. This is going to look really good for CLG. They still got this Baron buff. Fnatic does not want to fight yep. into a Baron buff team with a Galio ult. Yes, absolutely not. Um, Galio is going to survive probably uh, even through the... the I mean, they can't really deliver that burst while he's ulting. So even even if they do take out Galio right after his ult, he's going to have disturbed them, interrupted them for long enough that CLG would have done enough damage to win the fight. Um, it looks like CLG are just going to keep bringing the momentum forward that they had coming out of that last game. They are looking very confident again. It looked a little bit shaky there, but it's going into that mid to late game phase now, and that's just where they're at home, and they know what to do here. Melisan trying to run away from St. Vicious, not doing a good job of that, though. Those cleavers really hurt now. There comes uh, Ezreal, does land a fade or Trinity Force pocket at that point. And they've got to be a little bit careful, though. Dr. Muno still throwing out these cleavers. Fnatic going to run all the way back into the base. They'll survive this, but 
they're not super happy right now. The gold yeah. advantage, 5,000 gold at this point. Wow. It would be 9,000, but they got four dragons so far. Um, wow. Yes. That, it's quite good to, to kill those those dragons. Sometimes they store shiny, valuable things in their hordes. So well Two done. Two away from the next one. Yeah. Oh, very good. Um, uh, last misper probably being built on Caitlyn right now. She has the Infinity Edge. She also has the PD, and she's just keeping the, the, vamp, the vamp Scepter in her inventory for a little bit of uh, life steal there. Mm -hmm. I really, I'm not sure what could happen right now. Fnatic need a perfect initiate where they take out one of the squishies right away. They do have the burst for it, but CLG are playing super, super carefully and confidently as well. I mean, they know when they can go in, and the rest of the time they're just doing such a good job protecting him. And the 613 Dr. Mundo from St. Vicious, that's almost ban worthy right there. <laughs> Next time somebody plays against CLG. I think it's the second time they've played Mundo as well. I didn't see all the offline games, but um, they ran that the very first day against uh, the very first match against Dignitas. They're running it the very last match here against Fnatic. And we're going to see how that pans out for them. Shushe getting more stacks. 27 now is getting closer to this late game scenario. And mm. that ult can hit really hard. Once he gets max stacks, I mean, look at the damage here. It's going to be 400 damage each side. Sorry, a little bit, little bit, little bit of that's cut off on the stream, but 400 damage each side on that ult. And you, you multiply that with a Vlad ult, etc. And you're going to do a lot of pain here. So you're going to back with this turret. Another bit of gold income for them. Dragon's coming up. In uh, 50 seconds, Baron's in about a minute. Yep. They're setting up to defend this, um, this inhibitor turret now. That's, of course, they need to. They can't just keep giving inhibitors to the enemy. Sinat gets caught again there. He's going to be fine. Does lose a good bit of damage. And that's the problem when you're, uh, when you're being sieged by Caitlyn. She has all this time to put out the cupcakes. And if Sinat goes in there with his shield to eat them, uh, he can get uh, charmed by Ari. And that's going to be a rather dead Nocturne. Um, they are probably just going to see just do as much damage as they can to the turret until Baron respawns. Um, but until then, I mean, if they can get the turret, they'll, they'll take it, but I don't see them overcommitting really, Freak. Yeah, CLG are very good at being patient. You can see the amount of spam they have here. They're using the Caitlyn ult just to poke and deal damage. Yeah. Cyanide tried to block that with his spell shield, was not quite able to. So now, um, you know, the Shushe down about half health is not a happy place for him. And they're yeah, going to be back in Steel Blue. Well, he, he can just... Uh, Life steal that very very quickly with all that AD and he's gonna get near max stacks very soon if I can manage to have over there. Yeah, it's at 34 out of 40 So he's soon gonna have max stacks, which doesn't matter okay. at all because CLG are taking Baron Uncontested almost I feel there's the Nocturne ultimate, but where can you really go? They, they do turn around on him and oh good damage against double lift. Uh, Sina is falling double lift now, but he can kite him all game long. The ulti from Vladimir was down, but he was not enough. XP is dead already. Menesan using his ultimate to keep himself safe. Uh, I don't see it happening either. Shusha is dead already. Lamia flashing across the wall. Bigfoot will be flashing after him, picking up as, as well. And that's four for nothing right there. And I can see the surrender coming at this point, really. Yeah, CLG did a phenomenal job in that fight right there. They had, they pretty much split everyone out perfectly. Everyone kind of jukes around the right ways. No one got front load bursted uh, on CLG, really. Uh, you know, they, they opened up on, on XPK. He got hit really, really hard. And he didn't really recover after that. He was ignited, couldn't get any more health back. Yeah. He pretty much blew up. Melisan did get the ult off, but it just was not enough to reset that fight properly. Um, and, and they just, yeah, they couldn't get anything else done. Chaos didn't even have to use his ultimate. They just completely wow. blew that one up. And there we there go. It is. CLG <laughs> going to be moving on to day three. They have gone 4 1 in their group, and they're going to be A OK. Fnatic, 2 and 3 in this group, not going to be too happy about yep. this one. And we're going to have to see what's going on between Dignitas and. Uh, and